welcome back to the channel. Um, a beautiful English summer's day, as you can see. Um, I've got a bike review for you. Um, and we're looking at Royal Enfield's latest offering, the Gorilla. I don't know why they called it a Gorilla, I don't know. But uh, yeah, based on the, um, the Himalayan 450. And, uh, and it's parked right behind me, so we'll have a quick look and see what we think. Here it is. Not quite sure it knows what it's supposed to be, to be quite honest. It's, is it a road bike? Is it a flat track style? Is it... I don't know. It's, uh, but anyway, it is. Obviously, the, uh, the 452 cc engine that's in the hemi the hemi 450 uh, 84 mil ball 81 mil stroke 40 horsepower and 29 foot pound of torque you're going to get about 80 miles to the gallon out of this i think it's a bit more frugal than the uh, the himalayan but uh you got the six speed, obviously six speed box and a slipper clutch on it. Like I say, it's a Himalayan engine. Um, yeah, it's a 70 mil shorter wheelbase. Uh, and you've got a 780 seat height on it. So uh, sh people shorter in the legs gonna, are going to touch the floor on this, no problem. Uh, what does it weigh? The weight is 174 kilograms, so it's a bit lighter than the Hemi because obviously you haven't got all the bars around the front. Um, so on the front end, you've got 43 mil shower forks, and they're non-adjustable, but they do the job. They uh, got the gaiters on there, uh, and you've got a single shock at the back. And that's adjustable for preload, so that's sat in there exactly like the, uh, the Himalayan. So you've got a 310, 310 mil brake um, with a cast wheel, that's a 17 inch cast wheel. Um, with a 120, 70, 17 Seat tyre on there. And then in the rear, Uh, and that's a 160, 60, 17 inch tyre. Get to that. This, the, the fuel tank is more uh, sloped than the Hemi and it's, it's 11 litres, so that should give you a range of about 180 miles. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's give this thing a fire up and see what, uh, what it sounds like. So, switch on, TFT, there it comes up, Gorilla. And then we're just. quite good from the back. Let's just show you these uh put the, oh, I can put the hazards on can I? That'll look better. There you go. So that's how your indicators work at the back so you've got your, your um, rear lights outboard and then your indicators are in the middle. Quite novel isn't it? Same as a hemi. In your front, what's your front look like? Go. LED front light as well. Switch that off. Got your Mickey Mouse mirrors. Got good views from the mirrors. And we've got grab rail and a little handrail there. But all this on this frame, you can see where they've caught, uh, sort of brought the cost down. Um, everything's welded, so your footrest hangers and your exhaust hangers are welded rather than being separate and having a bolt. Sometimes when you drop these bikes, you can damage these, and if you damage it, it's easy to. If you've got a bolt on one, you just unbolt it and replace it. But if you drop this and damage this, you'd have a bent. I don't know what you'd do, to be quite honest. But anyway, apparently this bike was. 
designed at the same time as the Himalayan, so it's not like um, an afterthought, like the original Scram. Uh, the 411 Scram was an afterthought. They just unbolted a load of stuff and called it a Scram. This was actually developed in conjunction with the uh, the Himalayan at the same time. Yeah, it's got it's got a, a short odd wheelbase on this, um, and also they've messed around with the frame geometry at the front, so you've got um, four degrees less rake on it. So that, in conjunction with the 17-inch front wheel, you can you know theoretically tips into bends quicker. It's KTM territory, isn't it? Uh, one thing I've noticed as well when I was on about the build um, and cost cutting, the rad. Now, if you look at the rad, that is the radiator. So uh, they just, you know, there's no cover on it. You've got a, obviously a guard on the front, but uh, that is the steel outer piece of the rad. Oh, it'd be nice to have seen um, a little plastic cover around there, wouldn't it? just to finish it off it looks as though somebody's actually forgotten to put it on there uh, it looks even worse this side because you've just got a filler cap and your uh, your actual radiator body um, plugs in there would have been nice but hey you know oh that's something else I noticed now I don't know about this but it's a little clip it's only a little clip it, it um, basically holds your bloody keeps your brake together. Now, you can see that. That's a little clip that you can undo that, pull that out. Now, any kid, bearing in mind any kid could do this, pull it out, and you ain't got a back brake. <laughs> That actually disconnects the slave cylinder from the brake lever. Yeah, a bit of a weird one. You'd have thought there'd been a split pin turned, you know, turned round a traditional split pin in there. So it wouldn't be quite as easy to get it off. Uh, gear lever, yeah, that's all right. Oh, are those vibration? Yeah, we got we got some anti-vibe rubbers in there. That centre stand. Good bloody hell. Putting this out at 4850 in the base colour, whatever that is, and then as you go up in the different five colour variations, it costs you more money. But I think it peaks out at about 5100. I might be wrong, 5150. But um, all the info is out there anyway. Um, but I say it's a, it's a Hemi engine, so I'm not going to get too sort of far into all the, the spec and everything um, but yeah so what we do is we take this for a spin round or should I go and have a cup of coffee I could go and have a cup of coffee couldn't I? no I'll, I'll get riding it just in case it rains because you can see what the, the weather's like it's pretty horrendous there's a few people out on the lakes but it's warming up it is warming up so um, We'll get out and um, and try the thing out, shall we? See what we think of it. Right there, so switch on. There's your screen, does a sweep, revs out at 8,000 revs. Neutral, 0 mile an hour. Let's give it a start it up. Right, let's see what mode we're in. We're in performance mode. So that's a good thing. Hang on, let's just try it in eco mode. See what we got on eco mode. For starters. Oh yeah, the throttles are a lot slower on the pickup. I've done the throttle a fair bit more. I think we have to go this way. Oh dear. Yes. Clutch bike. The clutch bike's quite late, so um, that's something you've got to get used to. Uh, oh, crikey, yeah, you have to give it a handful to get it going. That's because I was in second gear. <laughs> it's 
it looks quite light over there, doesn't it? So we're going to head for Sirens, Esther. Yeah, up the front, wide open now. We're just thinking about picking up, so... Uh, handlebars are nicely situated. You know, I'm six foot. They, uh, they're just in the right place. The bike's probably a little bit small for me. Um, looks wise, but footrests are in decent position. Gear, gear change is in the right place, so I'd say that ergonomically I'll, I fit it. But it just feels to me um, a small bike. There's the old cafe there, I think they have a bike beat there every now and again. But yeah, so um, mirrors, yep, you can see a little bit of uh, arm intrusion in there, but you, you've got a good view. And uh, the bike will quite happily, it's a lot, lot quicker on the turn than its uh, Himalayan brother, or sister, whichever way you want to look at it. But uh, a little bit yeah, twitch here. But the brakes are lovely. The brakes are brilliant. A lot better than the uh, the ones fitted on my Continental GT. There's my little, there's your little uh, indicator arrow. It's too small, as far as I'm concerned. It needs to be a bit bigger. It's, uh, but yeah, in eco mo mode, it's fine. Uh, yeah, fifth gear, I'll just change it to six, 55 mile an hour. You can up that throttle wide open at 55, watch. Nothing happens. <laughs> it thinks about picking up. But, like I say, it's in eco mode. And I am in sixth gear. Cog it down to fourth gear. Oh, those vibes come through at 6,000 revs. Footrests aren't too bad, but then they've got those rubber mounts on them, haven't they? So uh, that's probably helping that a fair bit. Oh, yeah, you can flick it around all over the place. It's just like riding a little... Um, Size-wise, I won't say a 125. It's a bit bigger than a 125, but uh, it does remind me of the old 250s. Yeah, it, that doesn't really want to go when you when you initially open the throttle. It's there's sort of a lag there. The roads are drying out now. The tyres are fine. They're Seats. Six thousand fifty-seven mile an hour. Yeah, it's lovely. Lovely. Shall we go to Boybury? Let's go to Boybury. I've just decided where I'm going. Well, I'm going to pull in here because I'm going to put this into, into road or sport mode or whatever they call it. Right, so, mode button, doink, eco, perform, performance mode. Yeah, that sharpened the throttle up straight away. But as you open the throttle, it almost kind of dips. The fueling on it dips a bit. Oh, here we go. So I'll be going this way then. Yeah, I don't think this bike quite knows what it's good, what, what it's supposed to be, uh, identity-wise. It's a it's a lightweight road bike, but he, he, they could have marketed it as um, as like a flat tracker, couldn't they? Or is it? 
a flat tracker. Um, when you actually look at the styling, oh, I don't know. It, it, it's a question mark over it, isn't there? I'd be looking at this as a little scrambler. Like I say, the scramble, scrambler version of the uh, Hemi. Perhaps that's what it's supposed to be, but, um, but they've lowered the suspension on it. It's got a shorter travel suspension. And the bars are a bit lower. But with a bit of tweaking, I know the, it's a 17 inch front wheel. But they put the chunky tyres on it. But the suspension is fine. Uh, like I said, the fronts are non-adjustable, but they do the job. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get this on a trail. Right, coming into uh, Bybury. Nice and dry. The roads have dried out. Got the trout farm there. And you've got a lovely little bridge, and then if you turn left in front of the swan, which you, uh, we're coming up to, there's the motor hub up there, the classic motor hub. But I'm not going to go up there. I'm going to go this way. Yeah, you can see the everything's starting to evaporate now, all the water's starting to evaporate. It's where everything's warming up, look, there's some, it looks like a mist about. But this is, uh, there's Arlington Row over there. There you go, I don't know if you can see that. That's Arlington Row. Uh, very, very famous worldwide. Really, photo, you know, one of the most photographed rows of cottages I think there is. And they're, uh, like I said on one of my other vlogs, they actually feature in, uh, in our uh, UK Passport, one of the pages. Right, this is the road I had the MBP on when I tested that last year. This is a good little road, this. This would be, uh, this bike, I love this road. Beautiful valley there, and the river that runs along there. Oh yeah, hey! Now this point now, it's coming into its own. Right, let's try the brakes, there's nothing behind me. Oh yeah, yeah, the brakes are fine, you ain't gonna worry about the brakes. Really good brakes on this. Right, we're coming down into uh, a dip now that's supposed to be haunted. And according to a few people, they used to, uh, a few locals, they used to, years and years ago, they used to hang people down in this dip. There were some cuts just in here. They used to hang them from a tree if they'd be naughty. I mean, we're obviously going back a few years now, not. not wasn't like a few days uh, yesterday or anything, we were talking of 300 years or more, I expect, but... Yeah, so it's supposed to be haunted there. Eh? Right, Fairford. Another beautiful place. This lane is nice. This bike... <laughs> It is, it's like a little 250, you can whiz it around, this beep, well, I'm not going to say it again. This bike lends itself to being a little scrambler. Let's pull in here. And we'll have a... We'll have a look. Try not to get run over. So there you go. Right, well we're just... Uh just down the road from the mill in um, in Fairford and it's a beautiful little place, it's a beautiful area, good for walks and stuff um, and there's a, um, well, there's the mill down there and there's a beautiful water meadow over here and you can see the uh, trees in the way because there's a church over there somewhere 
can see the church spire. Lost it. Lost the church. But yeah, it's, it's, it's Cotswolds. Absolutely gorgeous. You all right? Hello, Dickie. Who's that? I recognise you. Who's that then? Where's Sandy then? Oh, right. oh, I don't know where he's on his push bike somewhere, isn't he? Is he? Are you, a, are you a, one of his subscribers, are there? Yeah, and I should follow you a little bit as well. Oh, all right. Oh, well done. So, yeah, nice so, to meet you. So I, I've just been, uh, yeah, I'll do a left hand shake. Yeah. I've just been recognised then. Yeah, recognised. And your, and your name? Nick. Nick? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, no, nice to meet you, Nick. Yeah, nice to see you. Uh, I'm just doing a review on the, um, the Himalayan, not the Himalayan, the um, Royal Enfield yeah, your new one. Gorilla. Yeah. It's a gorilla, so yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go and take some photos of the mill. So nice to see you. yeah, cheers, Nick. Take care. Yeah, see you, mate. Bye. Well, there you go. I've just been recognised by Nick, who's one of Sandy's subscribers and watches some of my stuff as well. Famous. <laughs> This is absolutely stunning right here. And there it is. It's the mill pond. It's uh, way up, this car coming. But yeah, this is absolutely beautiful. So, what do I reckon? What do I reckon? This little bike lends itself to being um, a scrambler. Now, whether it's supposed to be that, and I'm just being stupid um, or clueless, I don't know. But uh, as it is, it's set up more as a road bike. But what they've done is they've put some chunky tyres on. And, um, but they've lowered the, the suspension. I think it's got a bit of an identity crisis. Is it a road bike? You know, is it a scrambler? Oh, what's it supposed to be? For me, I go up a little bit higher on the bars so you can stand up on the pegs, no problem, without being too stooped over. And I'd, I'd have this as a, as a scrambler, I'd turn this into a scrambler, and you'd get away with the wheels as well, I think, even with a 17 inch. For sort of moderate trail work, it would excel. It'd be brilliant. I wouldn't say it'd be better than Hemi, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a lovely little bike. We'll try it out. I'm gonna go, before we t I take it back to the, um, the shop, I'm gonna find a couple of trails, and take it down the trails, light trails, just to see what it's like. But, um, yeah, as a road bike, little bit lacking but as a scrambler that would that would fit the uh, the bill perfectly now why they haven't done that I don't know um, or is it supposed to be that I don't know this is the thing I mean you've got that you've got this rear piece there which is a bit sort of if you look at it, it looks a bit flat tracky doesn't it if you if you imagine the tail put the uh, indicators and that gone that would that would look a bit scrambly yes and, and um, flat tracky so perhaps that's what the bike's supposed to be but um i don't know i'd have called it the hemi hunter because <laughs> it's very similar to a hunter to ride road bike wise you know as in the road bike guys it's very similar to a hunter isn't it Finishing work and it's Friday, so anyway, away we go. Right, am I going to get wet? 
I want to try and head out to Hackpen Hill. Well, I think that's going to be a mistake somehow. So the motor, in power mode, is a peach. Right, well, let's watch out what's going on here. Not a grit in the road, look. Whoop. She begs to be ridden hard, this bike. Right, let's test my theory out. See how this suspension coats with the yes. No problem whatsoever. That's where this bike's a this is where this bike should be. It just it's just so much shorter than the Hibby. <laughs> it's like a little 125 almost. Light trails. Right, I am I gonna get this all covered in dirt? don't really want to do that. Let's just go through here, nice and steady. We won't go down there. But that's just proved me uh, my theory. I got it dirty. No, not too dirty. <laughs> so, my theory was right. This colourful little bike here is at home in places like this but yeah so there you go I'm impressed I'm liking it right here we go then <laughs> 